Hey guys, Nate Coliseum here for my video on social intelligence. I'd like to discuss Temple Grandin's path and her journey to mastery. That being said, let's get started. <laughs> Temple Grandin was born in 1947 and was diagnosed with autism at the age of three. It seemed that she would need to be institutionalized until her mother decided to drive speech therapists to the last resort. Miraculously, Temple slowly managed to learn English and began to attend school. However, life was still a challenge. Her mind worked differently and was prone to anxiety if she didn't have something to concentrate on. That being said, when she became troubled, she would always retreat to her two comfort activities, building with her hands and interacting with animals. This would come to her advantage when she visited her aunt's ranch when she was 11. She noticed a squeeze chute for cattle and something inside her clicked. Being on the spectrum, she had a fixation on being held tightly, except for being hugged by adults. She pleaded with her aunt to let her try it, and finally felt that sense of peace that she always wanted. Later, she used that experience to research the effect of touch and pressure on autistic children. Furthermore, when she pursued her master's degree in animal science, she wanted to research feed loss and squeeze shoots on animals to better understand the behavior. However, none of the professors in her department could understand this and said no. But Temple didn't back down. She outsourced her professors to outside of her department, and today, she has her own business and is a known advocate for autism rights. I relate to Temple in a lot of ways. Personally, I myself am on the autistic spectrum. Much like Temple, I was aware of my limitations early in childhood. As a kid, I had to see speech therapists from when I was in preschool up until high school, and to this day, it still affects me. Temple herself was not very good socially, and, well, frankly, neither am I. For example, Temple tried to work around this by throwing herself into a work and seeming very proficient at it, though, sadly, this didn't work either. My mind essentially works the same way. Um, I've had several jobs where if I don't fit in, I would throw myself into the work, and thinking people would just see me as a great worker. But that's all people saw me as a worker. They only saw me through my faults at work and nothing more. So later I learned to open up. On top of that, I also learned from Temple to use what you know because it may come close to you in, in a way that you never expect. For me, my love of entertainment and taking advantage of technology led me to my path. It led me to my path for video production and it led me to get my master's degree here at Full Sail. It's in everyone's nature to constantly compare yourself to others. Me personally, this was easy to fall into when I was in college. It seemed like every one of my peers was doing way better than I was. And as Robert Greene says, it's easy to become toxic because of this because one could be nice to you, but in reality, they just try to get close to you in order to hurt you. The way to avoid this is to think to yourself, hey, good for that person. Vice versa, if I saw someone getting jealous of me, I would offer to help them and then ask if there was anything I could do and maybe give them tips. And then eventually you win them over. Everyone's path is different. It's possible that two paths can lead to the same destination. Me personally, I have a tendency to watch my work after it's done and enjoy the feedback in my head in order to boost my ego. And then it would hurt all the more if I saw someone's work that was better than mine and then it would lead me back to the path of envy. This can turn into disguising your self-interest into faking self-interest in others to get what you want. This is how you alienate yourself from everyone around you when you actually need something, even when they politely decline. Kinda like a boy who cried wolf thing. The way to avoid this is to ask people about their interests with no ulterior motive. No questions asked, you'll eventually win them over. If you keep looking at the past, you won't see what's in front of you. Thanks for listening.